Hey everybody, how are you guys doing? Well, welcome back to another session, session 18 of the Foundational Faith Series as we continue in the section about God's commandments. And last week we talked about Adam and Eve and how they showed us the example of obedience versus disobedience. And now this week we're going to get into the topic of what obedience looks like. What are the consequences that happen when we obey, and I, I think the, this this uh, particular lesson and then lesson 19 are going to be very important, I believe. We learn about the contrast between obeying the Lord and disobeying the Lord. Now, before we uh, move any further, though, I would like for us to take a moment and pray, as always, and to seek the Holy Spirit. Let's go ahead and do that. Father, we thank you so much for this time. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your spirit. Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name that you reveal truth to us. You open our eyes and our ears to know what it is you have for us to learn today. Father, we seek you, we desire you, and we seek to obey you in all things. In Jesus' name we pray. So we're going to go ahead and just jump right in here. We're going to be, again, talking about the consequences of obedience. Consequences of obedience. And we're going to be reading a few <clears throat> passages of Scripture as we go through. And our first is coming from 1 John chapter 3, verse, uh, verse 24. It says this. <clears throat> Those who obey God's commands remain in fellowship with him, and he with them. We know he lives in us because the spirit he gave us lives in us. Now, once we understand the true motivation behind our obedience, which we've been talking about now for several weeks, we can then start to discuss the consequences of obedience. Once again, we must emphasize that the consequences, whether good or bad, should never be our motivation to obey. However, the consequences will always occur. It doesn't matter the reason behind why we do something, we are going to experience the consequence of that decision regardless. However, everything that you do, every decision that you make, will bring the consequences that are consistent with those decisions and motivations behind it. We must always remember that obedience to God should never be, and in fact cannot be, about earning His love. I want you to make sure you understand that. Our obedience does not earn his love for us. He already fully loves us unconditionally. Obedience is not about him loving us more. Obedience is about our love for him. So, what, what, uh, so if we do obey him and we obey out of the proper motivation, out of our love for him and our desire to please him, what are the things that are going to happen? What is going to be the consequence of that decision to love him and then obey him? Let us go ahead and begin to look into that deeper. Let's look in Luke chapter 6, verses 46 through 47. As for everyone who comes to me and hears my words and puts them into practice, I will show you what they are like. So here, he, here uh, uh, Luke is talking about uh, those people that actually hear him and do what he says. This is what they are like. They are like a man building a house who dug deep down and laid the foundation on a rock. When the flood came, the torrent struck, meaning the big wave came, struck that house, but could not shake it, 
because it was well built. The very simple answer for what we will experience can be summed up in this way. We will experience the fullness of God in our lives. We will be completely free from the consequences of sin, and as such, will be in complete union and complete perfect relationship with the Lord. Adam and Eve, as we talked about last week, had a relationship with the Father like no other human being has ever had. There was no barrier between them and the Lord. When they walked in obedience before the fall, their relationship with the Father was completely unhindered. No distance, nothing blocking them at all. Because of this, they were entirely fulfilled in every way possible. Their need for love, their need for companionship, for friendship, their need to, to have a purpose, their need for intimacy was completely and totally satisfied by the love of the Lord through the perfect relationship that they had with him. This is the intimacy that the Father wishes to have with each one of us. However, because of the sin that exists in our lives, this intimacy cannot exist. This is why the sacrifice and forgiveness that Jesus provides to us is so important. It is through Jesus that this intimacy and relationship can be restored. Let's go ahead. We're going to go back to the book of Leviticus here and try to understand how that is possible. Leviticus chapter 26, verses 3 through 6. <clears throat> if you follow my decrees and are careful to obey my commands, I will send you rain in its season and the ground will yield its crops and the trees their fruit. Your threshing will continue until grape harvest and the grape harvest will continue until planting. And you will eat all the food you want and live in safety in your land. I will grant peace in the land and you will lie down and no one will make you afraid. I will remove wild beasts from the land and the sword will not pass through your country. See, consequence of obedience, though it absolutely affects our relationship with Lord, the consequence of obedience also has a major effect on our day-to-day -day lives as well. Now, earlier in this lesson, we learned how while sin in this world can be fully forgiven through Jesus, the consequences of that sin must be faced. When we choose to be obedient to the Father and do what he has told us to do, we're preventing the consequences of sin from affecting us right now in this place on this earth. Think about it. If we obey and we do not drink much wine, if we honor our bodies and avoid promiscuity and sexual sin, if we will guard our tongue and the words that we say, and if we are honest and honorable, then we're also going to avoid so many of the consequences that come with these sins and these choices. So many people in the world today are so burdened by the consequences of their sins that it's hard for them to imagine that there is a way out. How much better would it be to simply make the choice from the beginning to heed the commands of the Lord and just simply do what he tells us to do? As I said, not only does this have a tremendous impact upon the a, a eternal impact on the relationship that we have with God, uh, we, we are restored into communion with him. 
but it also affects our lives right here, right now, when we simply do the things that he has commanded us to do. It's very simple, folks. It's very, very simple. Do what God asks us to do. Obey his commands. Follow his ways. And when we mess up and we know we mess up every single day, we fail. We know that we have a counselor. We have a savior who we can go to, who can forgive us fully of those things. And then we turn, we come from that, we turn and repent and go the opposite way, seeking to obey him. So as we close today, I just want to remind you to consider your ways, to consider your obedience to God. Follow the things that he has commanded us. That's the best consequence that you can have is when we obey God. Let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for your word. And Father, we thank you that you have given us commands, Lord, to show us right and wrong, to help us avoid the negative consequences of this world and of disobedience to you. Father, I pray that you give us strength to move forward in obedience, to show and demonstrate our love to you through our obedient decisions. Father, we thank you, we praise you, we give you the glory for it all. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you guys for joining again, and we will be back again next week with session 19 of this Foundational Faith series. Hope you guys have a wonderful week, and we will see you again next week. God bless, everybody. Bye.